After decades of international efforts, there is now a realistic prospect that we may leave this episode of human history behind us once and for all. The Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty was adopted by the United Nations General Assembly and opened for signature in September 1996. The CTBT bans all nuclear test explosions. It aims at prevention of nuclear proliferation and ultimately at nuclear disarmament. Our mission is urgent to ensure that the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty enters into force as early as possible so as to achieve the international community's long-standing goal of outlawing all nuclear tests. In this way, we will advance nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation and to contribute greatly to international peace and security. Thanks to its verification capabilities, the treaty can constrain the development of new and advanced nuclear weapons and prevent the proliferation of material, technologies, and knowledge that could be used to produce nuclear weapons. Let me take this opportunity to urge all states to refrain from actions that would defeat the object and purpose of the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty pending its entry into force. By building deeper understanding of the treaty among decision makers and the general public alike, we can strengthen and advance our collective effort to fulfill the promise of this important instrument. The treaty is backed by a unique verification regime to monitor compliance. The verification regime consists of more than 300 monitoring stations collecting data worldwide, together with consultation and inspection mechanisms. Tibor Tort is an experienced Hungarian diplomat with a long track record in disarmament matters. He is the executive secretary of the CTBTO Preparatory Commission, which was created to prepare for the treaty's entry into force. The Provisional Technical Secretariat of the CTBTO Preparatory Commission is building a verification regime that will let no nuclear explosion go unnoticed by the Commission's member states. In a very remote area, a strong underground explosion is set off using conventional explosives. The test explosion takes place only seconds after a small commercial blast in a nearby coal mine. The purpose of this experiment is to test the sensitivity of CTBTO's monitoring system and to calibrate some of its equipment. The next town is more than a two-hour drive from the site of the explosion. No one here noticed anything about it. The next morning, nearly 7,000 kilometers away from the explosion. When these two technical experts get to their desks at the CTBTO's secretariat in Vienna, they will find data about a distant seismic event. The event was recorded by several monitoring stations, which transmitted data to Vienna in near real time. The analysis indicates a mixture of seismic events. Several monitoring stations recorded a fairly large event, and one station detected also a smaller event, which was caused by the mining blast. Energy propagates from the epicenter of a seismic event in the form of waves that can be sensed by the seismic monitoring stations in the network. Data from several stations are combined to estimate the location and time of the event. In this way, it is possible to zero in on the epicenter of the event. Only later on will the technical experts find out that their analysis matches exactly the pattern of the explosions that had been set up to test the system. The seismic system plays a fundamental role in the uh, CBTO uh, technologies. Mm -hmm. There are 50 primary stations and 120 auxiliary stations. They both are used in a different way, 
but they, with, the, with, the, with these stations, we can capture any event, that, a very low magnitude event can be captured by the system, uh, giving us the, 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 the enough uh, certainty that we will not uh, will be missing large uh, magnitude or even explosions um, that take place in the, in the Earth. The establishment of the CTBTO's unique global system of monitoring stations began in 1997 and is nearing completion. To build the stations, CTBTO specialists had to venture into some of the most remote places in the world. Their job was to set up highly sensitive monitoring instruments and train the local staff to operate and maintain the equipment. In 2007, over 200 of the monitoring stations were sending data to the International Data Center in Vienna. Three waveform technologies, seismic, infrasound and hydroacoustic, provide continuous high-quality data. Seismometers measure waves in the earth. Infrasound sensors measure waves in the air that are inaudible to the human ear. And hydrophones measure sound waves in the oceans. What makes CTBTO data unique is that waveform data are processed together, fusing the three waveform technologies. These waveform results are then merged with data from radionuclide detectors. Radionuclide monitoring is key for fulfilling the treaty mandate, the ultimate verification of nuclear explosions. The high-quality monitoring station on the rooftop of the Vienna International Center is an example of the 80 radionuclide stations being established to measure radioactive particles in the air. With the radionuclide data, technical experts will be able to detect the smoking gun of a nuclear explosion. The radionuclide technologies at CTBTO can discriminate between uh, nuclear explosion events and any other signal coming from natural background or peaceful nuclear energy applications. Unlike uh, the waveform technology, the radionuclide technology can prove that this event was nuclear. A nuclear explosion, in fact, uh, is injecting into the atmosphere a very unique set of radionuclides that makes our judgment very confident. Through groundbreaking research, analysis of radionuclide particles are now supplemented by the ability to monitor noble gases, particularly xenon. If uh, somebody wants to do a test without that it has been seen, then he will try to do it underground. If it is done underground, then the waveform technology will pick up a signal but cannot distinguish if it is uh, a nuclear explosion or a normal explosion. Neither will there be any radio active particles in the atmosphere because it's underground. But in the explosion, a lot of radioactive gases are created and they will diffuse through the ground into the atmosphere. And then the wind will blow them over to our stations and we will have around 40 noble gas stations worldwide. So it will be picked up at least of one station. And so we can identify that the explosion was a nuclear explosion. Awesome. To get a better understanding of how air particles travel from their source to a monitoring station, the CTBTO is developing highly sophisticated models of global atmospheric transport in close cooperation with meteorological organizations. It is important to understand that the radionuclide released from the nuclear test explosion location towards our radionuclide stations takes place in all three special dimensions. So the radionuclides are transported not only in a horizontal direction, but they can also be lifted upward in low pressure systems, for example, or in thunderstorms, or they can be downmixed in high pressure systems or in the rear of a cold front. So to backtrack our radionuclide measurements to the possible source region, we have to describe the atmospheric transport in the same sophisticated manner on our computing systems. But how exactly do the vast amounts of data provided by the four technologies get to Vienna? Six satellites transmit the data from the monitoring stations to five hubs around the globe. 
From here, the data are piped into the Vienna International Center, where the CTBTO has its offices. The Global Communications Infrastructure, or the GCI as we refer to it, is a unique network that covers all 24 time zones and spanning both poles. Central to its design is the use of latest networking technologies in order to fulfill its mission to transport IMS data and IDC products with high reliability and security. And in addition to the technology, we have highly trained and motivated professionals that support the network 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The first data processing happens in near real time. Only two hours after the data have arrived in Vienna, the first report, a so-called automatic event bulletin, is available to member states. Improvements to the bulletin are made as more data arrive and are processed. The best automatically produced bulletin is then reviewed by analysts. Every analyst needs to be familiar with every monitoring station of the network. The analysts are sensing the entire globe from their desks. The analysis that occurs here is the reduction of this blizzard of gigabytes of information down to a very small amount of information that is useful to state parties. And every one of the events that goes out is basically certified by a human analyst. The vast quantity of data from the various stations is reduced through automatic processing. Analysts review roughly 80 events per day, or 30,000 events per year. The bulletins go to the national data centers of member states who can also request the raw data from which the bulletins were produced. It is unique that the high quality data are made available to the member states in real time. The Japanese Meteorological Association reported that the data that come via satellite from the CTBTO reach it within 30 seconds of being recorded at the station. Tell me, what's happening with H06? It's been I... having power problems and we've been opening tickets for it describing the bad power system at the station. The CTBTO closely monitors the operations of its network. Each station is expected to have a 98% reliability, unprecedented for such a large global network. Okay, we'll have a... This operations room in Vienna is the nerve center, monitoring all the stations and communication links around the globe, knowing immediately whether a station has encountered problems and needs repair. This state-of-the-art computer center began operations in 2005. It houses all central systems and networking devices to support the global monitoring system. We have uh, mass storage devices up to 180 terabytes, which holds the data forever. Because this is one of our main tasks, to make sure that all the data that we collect from a worldwide network is, is actually stored forever. All the data are archived and can be remotely requested at any time by the national data centers of the states that signed the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. More than 800 individual users have access to these data. The 90 states that host the CTBTO monitoring stations are getting cutting-edge equipment, software and training. This contributes substantially to capacity building, especially in those developing countries that are hosting stations. We conduct training to participants from national data centers on how to access, use the data and products and software that is available to the users. The software that we distribute is developed within the provisional technical secretariat of the CTBTO. In order to be able to get the data, users have to be authorized by their member states. This software is available free of charge.
The treaty includes provisions for on-site inspections in case of suspected non-compliance. After the entry into force of the treaty, states may request such a fact-collecting inspection on-site to determine the true nature of a suspicious event. Such an inspection adds confidence to the verification regime and can be regarded as the ultimate deterrent. For that purpose, the CTBTO conducts inspection exercises and develops specialized equipment and inspector training programs. The potential civil applications of CTBTO data are very promising, in particular in the area of disaster warning and mitigation. Tsunami warning centers have asked the CTBTO to relay the relevant data, and these are already making a valuable contribution to tsunami disaster mitigation. Leading experts in earthquake and tsunami monitoring agree that the CTBTO provides a speedier, more reliable and more secure route for data communication than any other global data collecting system, an important advantage for tsunami warning systems and disaster mitigation where timeliness is critical. Data generated in the monitoring of volcanic activity and the data resulting from atmospheric transport modeling could help civilian aviation to stay clear of dangerous ash plumes. Wind field forecasts could mitigate against hazardous airborne material. On the 9th of October 2006, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea announced that it had conducted a nuclear test. This was the first time in eight years that a country reported testing a nuclear weapon. At the United Nations headquarters, a unanimous Security Council strongly condemned the reported test, calling it a serious security issue for the world community. For the first time, the emerging CTBTO verification system registered an underground nuclear test. It reacted as it should, distributing data as the test took place. We had uh, over 20 seismic stations uh, of our international monitoring system that have uh, recorded and or detected signal originating from the announced test. In near real time, uh, data of the recording were available at the International Data Center in Vienna. Two hours later, the first automatic estimation of the location, the magnitude, and the time of the event was made available to state signatories. As part of the normal work, analysts at the International Data Center reviewed and refined the first estimate in order to make available the final product within 48 hours to the state signatories. Two weeks after the event, a radionuclear noble gas station in Yellowknife, Canada, registered a higher concentration of the radioactive xenon 133. Later then, the atmospheric transport modeling showed that these observations were consistent with the hypothesis that radioactive xenon was released at the time and location of the DPRK event. Under the treaty requirement, an on-site inspection area is to be no more than a thousand square kilometer. In the case of this particular event, analysis of all available data enable the identification of a potential inspection area of considerably less than a thousand square kilometer. It was the first time that the emerging verification system was put to the test. This test was passed with very good results. Although we are working in a test mode and with only 60% of the system in place and with only 25% of the Nobelgas network built up. 
the event was detected despite this low yield and it provided reliable data. This indicated how in the future member states will be able to make their own judgment about an event on the basis of the information provided by the verification system. The global alarm system we are creating is unique. It is unique because of the cutting-edge science. We are relying on advanced technologies for the seismic, hydroacoustic, infrasound and radionuclide facilities. It is unique because of the size. 337 facilities are put in place in the four technologies. It is unique because of the synergy. The four technologies work together in an integrated way. It is unique because of the partnership. We build facilities in nearly 100 countries. It is unique because of the global nature. The facilities are located all over the world. It is unique because it is democratic. The data and the products are to be shared in real time with all members of our family. And it is unique because it can be used for civil and scientific purposes as well. So we are creating an unprecedented verification regime, a global alarm system to support an end to all nuclear test explosions. The work of the CTBTO affects the future security of all mankind. The potential scientific and civil applications of the technologies it uses could also benefit every inhabitant of this planet.